Greetings sailors and welcome to Operation Hermes which is the latest operation to be added to the game. This one is the first in a couple of regards. Um, it's the first where you can play a tier 8 ship. It's the first where it is um, restricted to certain classes of ships. Although arguably you could say that about Dunkirk as well, but Dunkirk was basically a, you know, it was a, a tie-in promotion, so there was two ships specifically for it, and then also you could take the Gallant. In this case, well, you can take French battleships, or you can take uh, Tier 7 Allied cruisers. And of the French battleships, you can take the Tier 7, the Lyon, you can take the Tier 8, the Richelieu, and once the Gascony is on sale, which presumably is happening sometime soon, you will be able to take that in as well. Now, um, this one is running for two weeks as it's being launched, and uh, it's kind of the replacement for Narai, because they've taken out Operation Narai because um, people were farming it pretty hard, I guess. There was a lot of damage you could do in that one, and it's still possible to get some pretty good XP in this one, as we'll see, but you maybe have to work a little bit harder for it. It's not quite the damage farm. So, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to escort a Richelieu class battleship, the Ruin, up to either, uh, as you can see there, D1 or else uh, the alternate exit point, uh, which is just randomized at the start, is around A4. And other than that, there doesn't seem to be a lot of randomization. Where the enemy ships spawn from uh, appears to depend on whether you are... Um, uh, taking the the western or the northern exit route so there isn't really any variation um, within that parameter and then the composition of the AI spawns seems to also be fairly fixed and so that in a way makes it one of the least randomized uh, operations in the game it really is just are you exiting to the west or to the north and then once you know that you know roughly where the enemy ships are going to spawn now there is one other new feature that we can see right now that great big white mini map on the circle although not really new so much it was new with the halloween operation and they did say they were testing things with the Halloween operation and I think everyone including myself went oh okay they're maybe going to try some new consumables except of course the thing they also introduced was having um, partially obscured visibility for not the whole of the map as with the storms as they are at the moment but for just a part of the map and so that's what that white circle represents it's a uh, a patch of stormy weather that moves around the map and within that stormy weather as within the filth in the Halloween mode visibility is greatly reduced. So if you have a ship with radar like the Atlanta that's going to be especially useful. Um, of course there's also the Pensacola, not Pensacola, the Indianapolis and the Belfast at this tier with Atlanta. Uh, the, the Indianapolis does have the longest range radar of any of those but overall I wouldn't maybe say it was the best ship to take. Uh, there's also, uh, as you saw at the start, there's, there's planes on this one, there's a guaranteed set of planes um, and well you start off with those scouts and if you fail to shoot down the scouts you'll see there one of the secondaries is destroy a hundred enemy aircraft. If you do kill the scouts it becomes destroy 50 enemy aircraft. It doesn't appear to affect how many planes that you see it just affects how many that you have to kill to get the secondary requirement. So a tiny bit of variation, but not really within the operation itself. It, it just varies what you need to do to get that, uh, that secondary star. The other thing to note is that uh, we have a group of all cruisers. I think there is a limitation of uh, two battleships. I think that's the norm for um, all other operations. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I've never... Well, actually, maybe I've seen more than two. Maybe three battleships is possible. Yeah, I'm not sure about that now I've said it. It might be as many as three battleships are allowed out of the seven players. Um, but in this case, uh, what you can see has happened is that we have two bot battleships that have spawned with us. And... Uh, 
even if you've only got one battleship, it'll then give you an extra bot battleship. In this case, you know, we got the two bot battleships. And that's because there is this other secondary condition of have at least three allied battleships survive. It's not just three allied ships, it's specifically battleships. And it's interesting they've chosen to do it that way, because they could have just had it be three allied ships. But instead, if you have a group of all cruisers, you essentially have extra battleship firepower along with you. You get two extra ships overall. But I don't know how effective those battleships are. You don't really get to tell how many kills they have or how much damage they've done. So it might be that they, you know, don't fire as often or they don't have great accuracy or something like that. So we've had uh, so far the very initial spawn and then we've had the next spawn of destroyers and then the third spawn is probably um, the most dangerous in terms of there being lots of big guns but I would not say maybe the most dangerous overall because um, generally speaking you've got enough firepower to take them down. It's uh, a Bismarck, a Turp, it's a Scharnhorst and a Gneiser now and uh, as you can see on uh, this particular exit point variation they have spawned to the south of us and as far as I know they always spawn to the south uh, and if you're doing it the other way they will spawn to the north. So we're using the smoke at the moment, to, well I'm using uh, this uh, this Fiji smoke or is it even Fiji smoke? I don't know whose smoke this is in fact. Um, of course there aren't that many ships with smoke at this tier. Uh, Belfast, it'll be the Belfast smoke, there we go, I'll see the smoke cruiser that's here. So yeah there's the Belfast, the Fiji, um, but the most useful smoke cruiser is the Flint if you have one just because it can lay big clouds of smoke. But it becomes more useful in terms of um, smoking yourself. You actually might have noticed that in the chat at the start. Um, th this this was a, a bit earlier today as of this is uh, the, um, this being recorded, uh, which is patch day itself on uh, EU. So I've not played it that many times through, but it's been six, seven times I've played through today so far. And it only took a couple of goes to get this one, the five star, so it wasn't that difficult. But yeah, um, I haven't seen many flints, uh, but still, smoke is quite useful. I know I was just, you know, not really aware at that point that, that smoke could be as useful as it can be because it was only like my second time playing it through but yeah smoke is useful so we've taken care of the two tier eights that still leaves the Scharnhorst and the Geneiser now I've lost a bit of health myself but you don't have to be too concerned about um, taking some hits early on because we're about to hit the stage where there's a heal available and I'm on the wrong side of the island for it. It's a fairly wide cap circle but I don't want to be exposed to those two battleships. Plus we are just about due for another spawn. So I am instead going to make an incredibly awkward turn to try and get in with the main group of ships which is going to result in me bumping into one of the bot battleships we've been given. And meanwhile we've got another spawn of planes coming in and you'll have noticed perhaps that the off-map plane spawns are all tier 1 planes so they're very easy to shoot down it's just there are lots and lots of them so something like the Atlanta is still very very useful you know if you take an AA ship an AA cruiser or even um, Pensacola maybe I'm trying to think what else would have really good AA at tier 7. Like an AA spec Fiji would actually be okay but of course you don't get the defensive fire you would be relying entirely on manual AA so you would still get a decent number of plane kills but you wouldn't be able to shred the planes as I have been shredding with uh, shredding them with the Atlanta. Uh, and just uh, just to maybe interject a little side note here the Atlanta is still very very good for this operation uh, so if you are lamenting the fact that Narai's been taken out and you maybe don't much fancy taking the Atlanta out in uh, Ultimate Frontier because it involves firing at quite long ranges. As you can see in this one, it doesn't. Um, there's a bit later on where you might start to struggle a bit with the range uh, when it comes to taking down the enemy carrier because there is an on-map carrier as well. There's a Graf Zeppelin that you will have to kill and um, at that point your limited range becomes a little bit more of a liability. You've got to sail closer essentially but for the most part things are coming to you. So yes the Atlanta is still very very good in this mode, have no fear. So the Gneiser now has closed the distance, that Scharnholz is going down, there goes the Gneiser now and there's some more destroyers and there's also a Bayern so once you've dealt with the main 
group of battleships, you'll get the Bayern, which you need to kill. You need to kill all of the battleships to get one of the secondary conditions. And uh, also, you need to take out the destroyers. And uh, as you can see there, one of the secondary, uh, another one of the secondary conditions is that the Ruar must not fall below 50% damage. And I don't know if it can self-heal during that point where you were... Uh, where the, the healing circle, the, the repair circle actually pops up. Uh, I've not actually encountered um, a, a situation yet where the Ruan's taken that much damage early on, but uh, typically it's more towards the end because this isn't the last group of destroyers we'll see by any means. So this Gaeta is uh, about to go down hopefully, there we go, you can see quite a few torpedoes in the water so um, you only really need one or two ships with defensive or even good AA, um, otherwise if, if you don't have good AA, if you're taking say a Miyoko, no we can't take a Miyoko, what are we talking about? Um, oh I don't know, the Algerie then, the Algerie doesn't have particularly fantastic AA, um, I don't think. You're probably better off with uh, Hydro, and of course if you're in something like a, a Belfast or a Fiji, you're going to have Hydro anyway. So there's the Bayern, yet more planes coming in from the south, um, not quite... Um, and I don't quite have my uh, uh, defensive back, but this is my Cleveland AA spec captain, so I do have manual AA, so even without defensive, I'm still doing a number on these planes, it's just... Um... Oh no, wait, my defensive is going at the moment, of course I've triggered it. I was, I think that was cooling down to AA, no, that's me having triggered the AA, but anyway, even without it, it that, my point still stands, even without it, manual AA on an Atlanta, you know, you, you're going to kill a fair few planes regardless. I actually did this um, with with the flint because I do have a flint and uh, forgot to put defensive AA on it I had hydro and the hydro was still useful but I only had about 53 54 plane kills by the end of that so you're not going to rake in the plane kills quite as much without defensive um, but you will still get some just because they're so numerous so now we have some of the Graf Zeppelin's planes coming in the Stuka dive bombers and you'll be happy to know I don't think you get to really hear it in this one because they don't get close enough to make it drop. But you'll be happy to know that uh, you get the the classic, the, the famous Stuka dive siren sound with those, which I have encountered on other run-throughs of this. So, uh, yeah, it's a chance to hear that up close and personal, uh, although it might be a bit too personal if they're dropping on your ship. But I think generally they will try and go for the, uh, the battleships first and foremost. So now we come to... The final part, we're on the final leg, and as you can see, the Zeppelin has friends. Now, there was one run through of this where I saw another Atlanta player just run all the way north, basically, and they uh, promptly died to all of these ships because there's the Eugen, the Hipper, and the Graf Zeppelin, and there are also some uh, destroyers up there as well, I think, although the destroyers more go for the exit point, because they try and ambush you at the exit, so that's one thing to be aware of. You need to have at least one or two cruisers um, escorting the Ruar quite closely uh, towards the exit point, but you only really need one or two. Um, everybody else uh, really sort of needs to go for the carrier at this point. Uh, as long as the Ruar is relatively protected from the air and you've got some um, competent or confident players to tackle those destroyers, which, I mean, in a group of random players, you never know, but if you're doing this with uh, you know uh, enough people to um, do it yourself, as it were, which I think the minimum is four. Four you might be struggling to do this with, but uh, five or six players should still be doable. But yeah, um, because the carrier, it's not, it doesn't like sail into range particularly, so you get more of a, a window of opportunity towards the end. It will start to turn uh, down south. And one thing to know is that once the Ruhr actually gets to the exit point, it doesn't just sail to a, a circle at the edge, edge of the map, it sails off the edge of the map, so you've got a little window of opportunity, you've got a little bit of extra time, uh, but not a huge amount of extra time, so really you want to have started doing a bit of damage before that point. Now the storm has uh, passed from us at this point, so we can now have, uh, we, we can see the, the, uh, the Graf Zeppelin off in the distance, the uh, Adler, uh, but of course I don't have the range because I'm in an Atlanta, so I have to get a bit closer first. 
So we can see the destroyers pressing for the exit. We've also got a, um, a, a Nuremberg that's spawned in A1 as well. That's the very, very final ship that, that appears. And um, we've also got the very final spawn of off-map uh, planes as well. I think this time, yeah, my defensive actually really is on cooldown this time, it's not me getting confused. So it is just the manual AA I'm relying on. Uh, so we're not, I'm, I'm not shredding these quite as quickly, but somebody else may have had manual AA going at the same time. So we've taken out, I think, one Graf Spee already? Uh, or was it, no, it was the, um, it was the Hipper we've taken out. So there's the Graf Spee, who's trying to move into position to attack the, the Ruar. Um, it doesn't matter if the, um, like, if you have player battleships, they do count towards that, that three battleships limit. But it doesn't particularly matter if they take damage, it's only if the Ruar um, drops below 50% before the end, so... Um, like, deliberately eating a torpedo that might have gone for the Ruar is probably preferable. If you have to have that get down Mr. President moment and just eat the damage, then so be it, you probably should because otherwise you're going to lose a star. And, and you'll want as many stars as you can get for this one, believe me. The rewards are... Uh, this is another way in which it's, it's uh, different. Uh, the rewards are um, really very, very nice this time. Up until now, previous uh, with, the, with the previous Tier 7 Ops, rewards have been, was it like Elite Captain XP and uh, a bunch of uh, free XP and flags and camos and things. Um, this one gives you doubloons. The third, fourth, and fifth star all give you, I think, was it 50, 100, and then, is it 150 or is it 200 for the fifth star? I can't remember. I think it's 400 doubloons you get in total for a five star operation. And obviously, the first and second star give you rewards as well, although it escapes me temporarily what those are. Uh, but yeah, it is absolutely worth just trying to get this one uh, once through at least, especially if you're a, you know, a, a completely non paying player. Uh, or you, you know you can't afford to uh, spend a lot of money on this game. It's it's free doubloons. It's like what a port slots worth or two port slots if you wait for a sale. And uh, you can also of course use that for equipment demounts and uh, probably some other things as well. Like you know converting a little bit of free XP or buying a, a couple of the the premium. Uh, you know, like restocking a couple of the, uh, the, the, the the camos that you can restock for doubloons because you can't do that with all of them. So I've taken a flooding from that final torpid. I possibly could have avoided it, but it doesn't matter if I sink or not. I mean, the, the Ruan did take a little bit of damage in this one, but as you can see, it's still what 85% health, 90% health. So um, it doesn't matter if I've sunk. Really, uh, it, it would be nice not to sink, but uh, as you can see, we've managed it five stars. So. Yeah, we've actually managed to kill everything. It is not that difficult if everybody's being sufficiently organized to kill everything. And you can see there the the, the Ruar just sailing off the edge of the map. Uh, it, it's not a big window. You'll see it, it's not that many seconds. Uh, it's maybe like 20, 25, 30 seconds at most once it reaches the map border. So if you haven't killed the carry by that point, you know, you're running out of time. But um, yeah, no. Uh, there we are, five stars. So, um, that was a pretty good round for it, though. Um, 126 plane kills, which will definitely have helped my uh, my XP, but the, the damage result was all right as well. Uh, 2,429 base XP, um, but that was quite far in advance of everybody else, and I think that was the effect of the plane kill. So, you have to have something like an Atlanta to, to really... Like, you have to have a lot of plane kills over and above um the the damage you've done to really boost you up over the 2k base xp it seems like and uh otherwise it's not quite as uh, as i said it's not quite as good for farming xp as narai was i think i think they decided narai was a bit too profitable for players so yeah this one can be as profitable but you you need to work a bit more for it and um, it's maybe not a complete and total coincidence that you know the atlanta is very very good for this and the, the atlanta is uh, uh one of the better ships to to get those high base xp results with because it can shoot down all those planes so yeah but maybe the whole thing is a sneaky plan by wargaming to sell more atlantas but on the other hand if you have an atlanta already it's nice for it to to um, uh, for it to have something that it's relevant for, because if you take it into a, just a standard game, then 
you never know what's going to happen. You know, you might get lucky with the map. You might get lucky with there being like you know two aircraft carriers for you to play with. On the other hand, it might be a really terrible time. So yeah, you just never know with the Atlanta. But with the operations, it's a much more predictable experience. So that's Operation Hermes. Um, I quite like it overall. Um, yeah, reasonably challenging, but not too difficult. Um, but definitely not the damage farm that Narai was. But um, still, yeah. Um, I, I think this is a pretty good one overall, and I, I, I like that roving storm mechanic. We'll see if it comes into random battles, but uh, certainly it works quite well for this. So hopefully you found this video useful, and if you have, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments below, you can sub to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, stay tuned for more.